Well, hello, I'm John Motson, BBC football commentator, and I'm standing in one of my favourite stadiums, which of course is Wembley. I've had the pleasure of doing the FA Cup final here on a total of 23 occasions, and that doesn't even include the five replays. People say to me, what was your favourite final? Well, one of the very, very best was 1981, Spurs against Manchester City. It was the 100th FA Cup final, and the star of the show was the big Argentine, Ricky Villa. It was a really exciting game to which Manchester City made a contribution. The score was 2-2 with a few minutes to go when Villa worked out how to get through the City defence. Villa, and still Ricky Villa! What a fantastic run! He scored! He dribbled past three or four players and slid the ball under Joe Corrigan for one of the great Wembley goals. Just look how many players he twisted and turned past and then got his shot in. So Spurs were cup winners in 1981 in a final that nobody will ever forget. It's the year of the cockle. Now I'm going to let you into a secret here because 1987 gave me as a commentator one of the biggest heart palpitations of my career. The final was Spurs, there again after two earlier appearances in the 80s, and Coventry City, who'd never been there, but got to the final under the joint management of John Sillett and George Curtis. Everything was going well when the teams came out, and what I didn't know was that five of the Tottenham players had put shirts on without their advertising logo, whereas the other five were playing with them on. Well, the game itself sped by. It was a fantastic match. Clive Allen scored in the first minute for Spurs. Coventry came back, a marvellous diving header by Keith Houchin, an own goal by Gary Mabbott, and Coventry won 3-2. But afterwards, I had a very worried phone call from my opposite number in the ITV commentary box, Brian Moore. He hadn't seen the difference in the shirts either, and he was desperately worried that he was going to get criticised for it. I just said to him, I didn't spot them either, Brian. So thankfully, we were both off the hook, and it was a cracking game as well. The first time the Spurs have ever lost a final. Well, here is one of my favourite finals, and I'll tell you why. The biggest shock result in my Wembley history. 1988, Wimbledon, the crazy gang, are up against Liverpool. So much hot favourites that nobody in the country, apart from the Don supporters, gives Wimbledon a chance. But what happens? As usual with the FA Cup, there's a surprise in store. Liverpool don't really get out the blocks, and early in the game, Wimbledon have a free kick, it's taken by Dennis Wise, and Laurie Sanchez heads the ball in at the near post. But there's a twist in this final because in the second half, Liverpool got a fairly fortunate penalty. Dave Besant had said to me the previous Tuesday night, don't worry, I'm going to dive to my left, whatever happens. And what happened? Aldridge did put it there, Besant did save it, and became the first goalkeeper to save a penalty in a Wembley FA Cup final. His homework paid off. Better than that, Dave Besant was also the Wimbledon captain, so he actually lifted the cup on that famous afternoon when I said in the commentary box, the crazy gang have beaten the culture club. So we come to the 2013 FA Cup final. It's two Lancashire clubs, it's the favourite against the underdog, it's typical cup final fare really for the fans who are here on Saturday and I'm quite certain that the event in this marvellous stadium will not let them down.